Good morning, everybody. My name is Aaron Hannan. I'm the CEO of Luminate Medical. And this morning, I'm going to talk to you about the science of disrupting cancer care. I know we're not going to do too much pitching today. We're going to focus on the product, but I think it's important to start with a purpose. Um, in healthcare, we tend to focus quite a lot on disease-destroying capability, on getting better at beating diseases. But one of the things that happens when you optimize for that is that you forget that those diseases are attached to people. And ultimately, we're trying to fix people as a whole entity. And I think cancer care is a really good example of this. The whole world knows that sudden hair loss means cancer, yet millions of cancer patients wish that that wasn't the case. And even though in the past 25 years we've made amazing progress in terms of survivorship, you know, people don't want to survive. They want to live better lives through and after cancer. And that's what we focus on at Luminate Medical. We build the technology that helps patients to control and prevent the side effects of cancer treatment. So we do this across three core topic areas, the first being hair loss, which 3 million chemotherapy patients in the US and Europe experience every year. The second being peripheral neuropathy, which affects up to 68% of all cancer patients. And then also infertility, which affects chemotherapy patients of childbearing age or younger. In this presentation, I'm going to focus on the science of our hair loss technology. So, why do we get these side effects in the first place? Well, at a high level, chemotherapy drugs are a group of anti-cancer drugs which attack cells with a fast replication rate. And this is great because a common characteristic of cancer cells is that they have a fast replication rate. But as you might have guessed, we also have a number of naturally occurring cells which have such a similar rate. The problem then is when chemotherapy is in our bloodstream, the likes of our hair follicles get exposed. And what happens then is that they shift into what we call dystrophic antigen or dystrophic catagen. This means that they lose their normal cycle of growth, maintenance, and shedding. And ultimately, you end up with rapid and visible hair loss within three to four weeks of starting treatment. So what we have here is a classic targeting problem. We have a drug which works really well in some parts of the body, and then we have a withering side effect in other parts of the body, and these parts are reasonably well defined. Now, there's a lot of research going into making our drugs better at targeting themselves, but the feedback we get from clinicians and researchers is that chemotherapy and similar drugs which use some of the same molecules are going to be a mainstay of treatment for the next 40 or 50 years, so we need to find a solution. And what we've developed is a way to target and prevent the delivery of drugs in those areas where they're causing side effects. And the treatment we've invented to do this is called localized microvascular compression therapy. And so what this is, is applying low-level compression therapy across the surface of the target tissue, in this case, the scalp, and doing that at just enough pressure to overcome the mean capillary pressure, which we derive from your blood pressure. So what that does is you're closing off those tiny capillary vessels that feed the hair follicles, and then preventing blood perfusion around the target site, which means that you can significantly reduce drug delivery at the target site. We do this for long enough, or for a period that's related to the half-life of the drug that we're treating against, and then we're able to prevent that side effect from happening. So now that we've got the theory down, what are the challenges of actually implementing this type of treatment? Well, there's a few things in this in terms of how are we actually going to apply this compression. First of all, you want it to be low enough so that you've got a comfortable treatment which patients will accept. But second of all, you want it to be high enough so that it's above that threshold that I talked about to be efficacious. So what you end up with then is wanting a low level of compression, but doing that consistently across the entire surface of the scalp. And as you can see from our FEA diagram here, that's actually quite a challenging thing to do. If you think of most of the ways we apply compression, compression socks, bandages, you actually get very uneven compression across the span. And so in this case, that's not really going to work because we're going to get discomfort for people or we're going to get um, the efficacy not working in certain points. And so what we've developed is a pneumatic bladder system which applies even compression across the entire surface of the scalp. Um, and what we get from that, if you remember your uh, high school physics, the pressure in a gas is even everywhere. So if the bladders are elastic enough, we're able to achieve a consistent effect which creates great efficacy for patients. The second challenge then is what happens when I want to stop treatment? 
Um, we usually think of what goes up must come down, but in this case, it's actually what goes down must come up. Um, we know from the areas of cardiac and stroke research that reperfusion injury, this coming back up, can be a real problem because in those cases, when a clot is removed, the blood flow massively overcompensates, and so you end up with even further damage being caused by wild changes in the pH due to this rushing back of blood. And we actually see this in our own work as well, and this simplified laser Doppler blood flow trace, you can see when we release the compression, you get a massive spike of blood, and so this creates risks for the patient alongside being quite uncomfortable. So what we figured is that with a slow ramp down protocol where we allow the tissue to acclimatize slowly over time and then massage it as we reduce the effect, then we're able to get a much healthier restoration of blood flow and allow our cells to continue to grow normally. So now that we've got that down, we've actually got to try this in humans and see can we actually get those perfusion reductions around the hair follicle. And as you can see from these glorious photos of me, and yes, I am available for modeling, um, there's laser Doppler sensors here tracking my blood flow, and we've built a prototype rig just to get really good compression. And what you can see here is that we're actually able to get about 90% reduction in blood flow around the hair follicle. So, and that's significantly greater than some of the existing cooling-based modalities that are on the market for hair loss. So we're able to get a very effective and consistent approach using compression. So then the next step is, well, actually, let's go and prevent some hair loss. If I could change the slide, I would show you. Ah. That was a bit slow. So we're able to then actually prevent hair loss. So you can see from this trial here, we had over 100 subjects involved, that we're able to actually protect hair loss from cyclophosphamide, which is a really commonly used and pretty potent for hair follicles chemotherapy drug. So using cyclophosphamide inside those green areas, we're actually able to get compression-induced protection of hair follicles despite the presence of cyclophosphamide, and do that at a market-leading rate of efficacy. So I'm really delighted to introduce then, based on this research, the Lilly device, a portable, comfortable, patient-controlled device to prevent chemotherapy-induced hair loss that uses our compression approach, which we've described, alongside our patent-pending pneumatic bladders to create a really effective treatment for patients that's also portable, allowing them to leave the clinic and improving access for patients because it minimizes friction with the hospital's workflow. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been loads of fun to talk to you this morning. If you're interested in our research at Luminate into hair loss, peripheral neuropathy, or infertility, come talk to me. But I'll leave you with just one thought. In healthcare, the challenge for us is to shift from just surviving, because life's about more than just surviving. Life is for living. Thank you. <laughs>